Today, Mr. Potato has come to Peppa's playgroup. Children, Mr. Potato is here to talk to you today about eating fruit and vegetables. Oh! I am going to show you a movie called Super Potato. Yay! Super Potato! Wow! Vegetables, I am here. Aha! Thank you, Super Potato. Remember, kids, always eat your five a day. Fruit and vegetables keep us alive. Always remember to eat your five. And now we have a very special guest. Can you guess who it is? It's not my daddy, is it? No. It's not my daddy, is it? No, it is nobody's daddy. Is it my mummy then? No, it is no relation of anyone here. The special guest coming to see you today is... Super Potato is coming. Hooray! But before he does, we must call him... <clears throat> Super Potato! Super Potato! Very good. I'll just go and see if he is outside. Keep shouting. Super Potato! Super Potato! By the power of vegetables, I am here! Hooray! Wonderful! Now, who has a question they would like to ask Super Potato? Ask me anything you like about fruit and vegetables. Anything! What is the tallest building you've ever jumped? What's that? Why do I like carrots so much? I'll tell you why. Because they are so tasty! Can you run faster than a train? Which vegetable makes you run fast? That's a good question. I would have to say a Brussels sprout. Have you ever eaten a potato? Uh, fruit and vegetables keep us alive. Always remember to eat your five. Doctors now recommend you eat seven a day. Uh... Always remember to eat your seven. Right. Let's all give Super Potato a nice big clap for coming to see us today. Thank you. Thank you. And remember, kids, eat fruit and vegetables. Super Potato has left the building. Oh, dear. Did I miss him? Yes! He was brilliant. Well, it was lovely to see you all, but I'd better be going too. Bye. Come on, children. Let's wave <laughs> Mr. Potato goodbye. Oh, dear. Mr. Potato's car won't start. Ah! I cannot get out! Mr. Potato is stuck. Help! Let me out! What shall we do? Help! Call help. for Super Potato! Let me out! Super Potato! Super Potato! I think he might be too busy to come. No, really, really, I do not think that will work this time. No, Madam Gazelle, you just need to shout out with us. OK. Help us, Super, Super Potato. Potato! There, it didn't work. Now I think we What's need to... What's that in the sky? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a potato. By the power of vegetables, I am here. Hooray! Super Potato has come to the rescue. Using my super vegetable vision, I can see that my friend here is in trouble. Yes, you have to get him out. I will use my fruity strength to lift this roof off. Hoo-ha! Super Potato has rescued Mr. Potato. Hooray! And remember, kids, when trouble calls... Eat your fruit and vegetables! Fruit and vegetables keep us alive. Always remember to eat your five. Seven. Always remember to eat your seven. <laughs> seven. Pepper is on holiday at Kylie Kangaroo's house. What are we going to do today, Kylie? We're going to the beach. Yippee! I love the beach. <laughs> Everybody ready? Yeah! Then let's go! <laughs> this is the beach. Wow! Look at the sea! And the waves! <laughs> yeah! 
You'll need life vests for the water. <laughs> Dad, are we good to go surfing now? You're all good. What is that? It's a surfboard. What do you do with it? You lie on it and the waves push you along. Ooh. Come on, Peppa, I'll teach you. <laughs> it's easy to float because the board is super floaty. <laughs> the tricky bit is catching the wave. Ready, steady, now, Peppa! Kylie is being carried along by a wave. <laughs> Don't miss the next one, Peppa. <laughs> Ready, steady, It's true. <laughs> Surfing is the best thing ever. Ready, steady, go! Whee! <laughs> George wants to go surfing. Sorry, George, you're a bit too little to go surfing. Oh, the waves are getting too big for Pepper and Carly. Oh, is it time to go home? Are you kidding? These waves are perfect for grown-ups to surf. That's proper surfing. Woohoo! These waves are awesome. Wow. wow! Kylie, where's your little brother? He's out there with Mum. <laughs> Having fun, Joey? <laughs> 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 Your turn to surf, guys. Thank you, but I'm quite happy to watch. Why don't you have a go, Mr Pig? Why not? It does look fun. Aw, the waves have gone. Too bad, Mr Pig. Looks like you've missed your chance to surf today. Oh, that's a shame. But it's just right for little George to go paddling in. <laughs> I'll come with you, George. <laughs> no surfing, George, but you can sit on me instead. George likes sitting on top of Daddy Pig. <laughs> Look at that wave coming! Crikey, it's a big one. Daddy, there's a big wave coming! Wave! wave. What's that? Wave! Wave! wave. 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 <laughs> I think they want us to wave, George. Cooey! <laughs> Cooey! <laughs> George is using Daddy Pig as a surfboard. <laughs> wow, George has got great balance. <laughs> Natural surfer, George. Maybe you can teach me a few tricks. <laughs> George is the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I loved surfing, Mummy. Yes, what a fantastic holiday we're having. So, what's planned for tomorrow? Are you uh, staying another day? I could stay here forever. Well, I do have to go to work tomorrow. They can come along too. Mm, OK. Well, I suppose that might be great. <laughs> Pepper is having a lovely long holiday with Kylie Kangaroo. <laughs> Canal boat. <laughs> Today is Captain Dog's birthday. Happy birthday, Captain Dog. <gasps> Thank you, everyone. Daddy, you look sad. Oh, it's nothing, son. Just seeing this here boat reminded me how much I miss the sea. Captain Dog loves the sea. Why not open your birthday present? It's a boat trip. A boat trip? That's just what I wanted. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing better than sailing a boat. You could go anywhere you want in a sailing boat. We could head for the tropics or have an Arctic adventure. We might even see a whale. Ha ha! It's just a day trip, dear. This is the canal. Now, where's the sailing boat? We 
we going on this canal boat? I see. We use the canal boat to get to the sailing boat. No, dear. We're going on this boat for your birthday and we're sailing it down the canal. But on a canal, you can only go this way and that way. It'll be fun. Come on, Dad. It is a boat. Yes, Danny, you're right. A boat on the water. All aboard. Oh, I wanted to say that. Oh, I'm sorry. Go on, then. All aboard! Raise the sail! Oh, where is the sail? Canal boats do not have sails. You just push this button to make the boat go. Ah, thank you, Mummy Dog. <laughs> and we're away. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs Duck is going faster than our boats. Want a race, do you, Mrs. Duck? <laughs> Full steam ahead! <laughs> uh, can't this thing go any faster? No, this is the top speed. Oh. Anyway, you want to slow down. We're coming to a mountain. Ah! Look out! There's a mountain in front. We're going to crash straight into it. No, we're going into the tunnel. There is a tunnel through the mountain. It's all gone dark. And our voices sound funny. <laughs> we sailed straight through the middle of a mountain. Ha <laughs> ha! This canal boat is actually quite fun. <laughs> Look, here comes another mountain. And that means another tunnel. Not this time. Oh, there's no tunnel. So what do we do? We're going uphill. There's no way in the world a boat can go uphill. There is, and it's called a lock. Watch, I'll show you. Mummy Dog is opening the gates to the lock. Take her in, Captain. Just wait there while I close these lock gates. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm letting in the water from the top. We're going up. The rising water is lifting the canal boat up. Now I open these gates. Take her out, Captain. Full steam ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Where's the ground gone? We're in the sky. We're sailing over a bridge. Yes. This bridge means we can sail high above the valley below. Ha <laughs> ha! Sailing across the sky. What could be a better adventure? <laughs> <laughs> sailing across the sky in a boat so high, floating on the water, sailing across the sky. <laughs> Have you had a fun time, Daddy? I should say so. I've sailed through mountains, over hills, and across the sky. <laughs> this is my best birthday ever. Captain Dog loves canal boats. Everyone loves canal boats. Grandpa Pig's greenhouse. Pepper and George are visiting Granny and Grandpa Pig. Hello, Pepper and George. <laughs> George has found a ball. <laughs> ah, careful, George. This is my greenhouse. It is made out of glass, which breaks easily. Oh. Let's throw this ball out of harm's way. Oi, who's throwing footballs at my greenhouse? Ah! People who live in glass houses should not throw footballs. You threw it first. It nearly smashed my greenhouse. Call that a greenhouse? It's a pile of rotten old windows. It's good enough for growing tomatoes. I'm amazed you can grow anything in that rubbish tip. I'll grow more than you do in your fancy glass box. <laughs> Grandad Dog and Grandpa Pig are the very best of friends. Grandpa, why is your greenhouse made of glass if glass breaks easily? Because I grow plants in it. Let me show you. These plants like sunlight and glass lets the light in. Ooh, this 
plant smells lovely. Oh, that's just basil. Granny Pig throws the seeds in a pot and it just grows. Oh. Let me show you something that takes real skill to grow. My tomatoes. They are very small, Grandpa. Eat one and tell me what it tastes like. It tastes of... nothing. Well, they're not quite ready yet. Hello, my little ones. Granny Pig! <laughs> Could I have some tomatoes, please, Grandpa Pig? Uh, no. I I'm afraid the tomatoes aren't ready. Maybe in a few weeks. But I want to make tomato salad for lunch. Grandad Dog is growing tomatoes. Yes. Maybe Grandad Dog will lend us some. I don't think we want Grandad Dog's rusty old tomatoes. Uh. Cooey! Grandad Dog! Ah, oh, Granny Pig! Lovely to see you this fine morning. Do you have any tomatoes we might borrow? Borrow? You can take as many tomatoes as you like. The tomatoes have done very well this year. They look a lot bigger than your tomatoes, Grandpa. They may be bigger, but that doesn't mean they're better. Pepper, would you like to taste one? Yes, please. Mmm, yummy. That is the best tomato I have ever tasted, ever. Ah. How did you grow them, Grandad Dog? I didn't really mean to grow them. I just threw some old tomato seeds down in the corner there and they grew. Fill your basket. There's too many for me to eat. Thank you. We're going to make a lovely tomato salad. Ah, I know a great recipe for a tomato salad. Lovely. Can you make it for us? The problem is, my recipe needs basil, and I haven't managed to grow any basil. My grandpa has lots of lovely basil. Really? Oh, yes. Grown heaps of the stuff. Let me show you. Very impressive. Tell me, what's the secret of growing basil? Well, it's quite tricky. The first thing you have to do... I throw some seeds in a pot and the basil grows. You mean it just grows by itself? Uh... Yes. Is it lunchtime yet, Granny? Oh, my poor darlings, you must be starving. Let's make that tomato salad. First we slice the tomatoes. Add a little splash of olive oil, a shake of pepper, a teeny tiny pinch of salt, and finish the whole thing off with these lovely basil leaves. Tuck in, everyone. Mmm. <laughs> Marvellous tomatoes. Thanks to my greenhouse. Mmm, beautiful basil. Thanks to my greenhouse. This is the best tomato salad in the world ever. <laughs> Peppa goes to Paris. Peppa is going to Paris today to see her friend Delphine Donkey. Is everyone ready? Yes, Daddy Pig. Then, Paris, here we come. Mummy, where is Paris? Paris is in France. We go on a ferry to get there. What is a ferry? Ha <laughs> ha, you'll see. This is the ferry. Wow. <laughs> there are lots and lots of cars in here. Let's go up on deck and breathe in some fresh sea air. Look, Mummy, the boat is rocking about. Yes, Pepper. Mummy Pig doesn't like it when the boat rocks about. All this sea air is making me hungry. Who wants to eat? No, thank you. The waves are getting bigger. Here, I brought you a fried egg sandwich. Oh. Land ahoy! <laughs> the ferry has arrived in France. Remember, Daddy Pig, they might drive differently here. Oh, oh, driving is driving, Mummy Pig. You see, it's just like driving at home. Ah, cochon de la roue! Hello there! Hello! Hello. <laughs> Pepper and her family have arrived in Paris. Delphine Donkey and her family are here to meet them. Bonjour, Delphine. Bonjour <laughs> means hello in French. Oh, what would you like to see in Paris? 
I want to see everything. Oh, it is impossible to see everything. In that case, I would like to see the real hidden Paris. The Paris that the tourists don't see. Bravo, Mr. Pig. Tell me, which part of the real hidden Paris would you like to see first? The Eiffel Tower. Ah, OK. This is the Eiffel Tower. Wow, this is busy. Imagine what the tourist places must be like. Look, Mummy, it's Miss Rabbit. I didn't know you had a job here, Miss Rabbit. Excusez-moi, I am not this Miss Rabbit. I am Mademoiselle Lepin. Oh, I'm sorry. Souvenirs, get your little Eiffel Towers here. The real Eiffel Tower is really big. Can we climb up it? Um, it looks a bit high. Daddy Pig does not like heights. Do not worry, Mr. Pig. We take the elevator. Going up. I'm glad that's over. Oh, no. That is just the first stage. Now we must climb the steps. Ooh, ooh. If you feel dizzy, Daddy Pig, just close your eyes. OK. This is as high as we can go as visitors. Let's look at the view. Ooh. These steps are going on forever. Oh, dear. Daddy Pig is not looking where he is going. He is climbing up and up and up. What a wonderful view of Paris. It's lovely. Yes. What do you think, Mr. Pig? Mr. Pig? Where is everybody? Ooh. Daddy Pig is at the very top of the Eiffel Tower. Hang on, Daddy Pig. Ah. I must call for the rescue services. You're here, Miss Rabbit. I am not this Miss Rabbit. I am Mademoiselle Lepin. Don't worry, Daddy Pig. I am going to get you down. Ah, I'm going even higher. What can you see, Daddy? I can see everything. <laughs> My Daddy came to Paris and he saw everything. <laughs> <laughs> Pepper and George are helping Grandpa Pig in his garden. Today, we are making a pond. Ooh. We start by digging a big hole. <laughs> Here is Mr Fox. Hello, Mr Fox. Hello, Granny Pig. What can I sell you this morning? I don't need anything, thank you. Oh, where's Grandpa Pig? Does he want anything? I'm afraid Grandpa's busy digging a pond. Pond, you say? Why, I've got just the thing. It's a gnome <gasps> fishing. Lovely. Antique. One of a kind. I'll take it. Pepper, George and Grandpa Pig are hard at work digging. Ooh. Pepper has found a little cup. Oh, that looks like a very old teacup. George has found an enormous bone. Dinosaur. <laughs> it might very well be a dinosaur bone, George. Ha! What's this? Grandpa Pig has found a gold coin. It's treasure, Grandpa. How is the pond coming along? Very well. We've dug up a cup, a dinosaur bone and a coin. It's buried treasure. How exciting. I have a little treasure too. That is not treasure. That is a gnome. Grandpa Pig does not like gnomes. Mr Fox says it's an antique. Very rare. One of a kind. Of course he did. Grandpa, do you think we really have found buried treasure? I'm not sure, but the museum would know. This is the museum. Hello, can I help you? Hello, Mr Rabbit. We've dug up some treasure. Let's take a look at what you've got. Mmm, a fine china cup. Interesting. What else have you brought to show me? A coin. Made of gold. Is it real plastic, 
gold? No, it's metal gold. Ooh. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, this bone is the best of the lot. Look, it fits my dinosaur perfectly. Hooray! Thank you so much for bringing these valuable objects in. Valuable? So they are worth something? Oh, yes. They are worth lots of money. And you can visit the museum any time you like to see them. Eh? Children are free. And you, sir, get in half price because you are old. Can I just ask where you dug up such treasures? In Grandpa's garden. All digging must stop until an expert has been to investigate. Why? There may be other rare objects buried in the ground. Granny, Granny, we're back. Hello, my little ones. Our treasures have to stay in the museum. And we can't dig here anymore until the expert digger comes. Where do you want me to dig, Mr. Rabbit? Just about here, Mr. Bull. <laughs> Mr. Bull is an expert at digging. Find anything, Mr. Bull? No, same as usual. Just a load of broken pottery and smashed stuff. Oh, well, thank you for all your hard work anyway. No problem. I'm sorry we didn't find anything else. Not to worry. The good thing is you finished digging our pond for us. It's beautiful, Grandpa. A lovely natural pond. And to finish it off, a gnome. Do you like it, Mr Rabbit? I never thought I would see one in my lifetime. Oh, they're everywhere. This is an antique, one of a kind and very valuable. Then it belongs in the museum. So it does. Oh. Don't worry, you can see it at the museum any time you want. And you can get in half price, Granny, because you are old. <laughs> <laughs> Move to music. Pepper and her friends are at playgroup. Children, today you will use your imaginations to move to music. Ooh. What does this music make you think of? It makes me think of a piano. Okay. It makes me think of music. Right. Use your imaginations. What pictures did the music make you think of? It makes me think of a cherry tree swaying in the wind on top of a beautiful mountain. Wonderful, Rebecca. So now I would like you all to imagine you are that tree, rooted to the rocky mountain top, bending in the wind. You are a tree. Your feet are rooted to the ground. Feel the wind in your branches and the sun on your leaves. You are a tree. Very good, children. I saw some lovely trees on mountain tops there. Now, listen to this piece of music. What did that music make you think of? Remember to use your imaginations. I know. Pedro? Is the answer a cherry tree swaying on the top of a beautiful mountain? Hmm, but this music was quicker, wasn't it? A cherry tree swaying quickly? Danny? It reminded me of a marching band. Very good, Danny. <laughs> this music has a very strong beat for stepping in time. Everyone, find something to bang from the music trolley. <laughs> Imagine you are in that band, marching along, beating your drums. That's it! Marvelous marching, children. Isn't that fun? Yes, my Majesty. <laughs> the next piece of music is a little bit different. Remember, I want you to listen to it carefully and think about how it makes you feel. This music is about space. <laughs> it's an alien birthday party. Oh, what is wrong with this machine? 
<laughs> Robots from the future! <laughs> Hello, I'm an alien. Bleep, 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 bleep. I am a robot! I am a robot! Zing, zong, zing! <laughs> this is the best music yet! No, no, I think the machine is broken. There. Oh. Now tell me, how does this make you feel? It makes me feel a bit bored. <sighs> it makes me feel tired. Has the music machine gone wrong again? No, this is music. It reminds me of a lovely garden on a hot summer day. A young man, a broken heart. Please, can we have the space music again? Th that was not music, it was the machine gone wrong. Do you not like this music? No. Madam Gazelle, can you make the machine go wrong again? No. Oh. I suppose we cannot all like the same things in life. I like the space music. And me. me. And, and me. me. And, and me. me. OK, OK. What does this music make you think of? I know, I know. This music makes me think of jumping up and down in muddy puddles. <laughs> <laughs> this way! Follow me, everyone! <laughs> Jumping up and down in muddy puddles Swish, splash, splash, swish, splash With a big splash here and a big splash there Here a splash, there a splash, everywhere a splish, splash Jumping up and down in muddy puddles Swish, splash, splash, splish, splash Peppa loves moving to music. Everyone loves moving to music. London! Peppa and her playgroup are visiting London for the day. Children, this is London! Wow, it's so busy. There's so much to see, I just can't decide where to go first. My friend the Queen lives in London. Maybe she can help. This is the palace where the Queen lives. Hello? Please, can I speak to the Queen? I am the Queen. Who are you? It's Miss Rabbit. You said if I was ever in London, I should drop in to see you. Ah, oh, Miss Rabbit. Come in, come in. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello Queen. Queen. We're visiting London for the day. We were hoping you could tell us the best places to see. I can do better than that. After all, London is my city. I'll give you a guided tour myself. Hooray! <laughs> the best way to see London is on a double-decker bus. Ooh. Mr Driver, please may we borrow your bus. Borrow my bus? You must be joking. No, I am your Queen. In that case, Your Majesty, take it. If the Queen asks you to do something, you must do it. Everyone up to the top deck. <laughs> the bus has stairs in it. The double-decker bus has seats at the top. I'm the Queen and I will be your tour guide today. Bus stop, Big Ben. <laughs> this tall clock tower is called Big Ben. Actually, Big Ben is the bell, not the tower. You know a lot for a little elephant. I'm a clever clogs. Oh. That was loud. That is the sound of Big Ben telling us the time. It rang three times, so it is three o'clock. If it rang six times, would that make it six o'clock? Yes, it would. And if it rang a hundred times? Then it would be broken. <coughs> On with the tour. Next stop, Tower Bridge. We need to cross the bridge to continue the tour. Stop! You can't cross! Look, there's a big ship. <coughs> Going to bang into the bridge. <gasps> the bridge is lifting up. Wow! Tower Bridge lifts to let tall ships sail through. Good. Now the ship has passed, we can be on our way. Please lower the bridge. I'm sorry, Your Majesty, but there's another ship coming. 
This is really too much. We can't wait around all day. Hold tight, everyone. <laughs> is balancing on the bridge. Now what do we do? Hang on a minute, lads. I've got a great idea. Everybody move to the front of the bus. OK. <laughs> Hooray! The Queen is good at driving buses. Are you enjoying your tour, children? Yes! yes. Open top buses are the best. <laughs> Why aren't all buses open like this one? It is raining. Ah, yes. That's why all buses aren't open like this one. Children, open your umbrellas. It is very important to take an umbrella when you visit London. Let's stop Trafalgar Square. Oh, dear, what a shame. Trafalgar Square is full of puddles. But we love puddles. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, have a seat. Your Majesty. It does look rather fun. And one is wearing one's boots. Whee! <laughs> the Queen loves jumping in London puddles. Everybody loves jumping in London puddles. <laughs> Wendy Wolf's birthday. It is Wendy Wolf's birthday, and she has invited all her friends to a party. Happy birthday, Wendy! Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Mr. Wolf is blowing up balloons for the party. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow these balloons up. <laughs> I love balloons. <laughs> me too. And me. And me. And me. Everybody loves balloons. <laughs> Let's dance. <laughs> Don't let the balloons fall to the ground. Keep them in the air. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Here is Mrs. Wolf. Who wants bubbles? Me, me, me. Okay, I'll huff and I'll puff. And I'll blow some bubbles. <laughs> I love bubbles. They are a bit like balloons. But they pop when you touch them. Watch. Woo! See? I popped one. <laughs> 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 can always make some more bubbles. Who wants to go? Me! me, 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 me. <laughs> OK. Hooray! <laughs> Are you ready? Yes, Mrs Wolf. You have to huff. Huff. And you have to puff. Puff. And blow. <laughs> so many bubbles. <laughs> Pretty bubbles in the sky. not a bubble, Pedro. That's the full moon. Ah, and you know what you do when you see a full moon? Um... You howl. Ow! Why do you do that? That's what wolves do. We howl at the moon. Wendy, can you teach us how to do that? OK. First, you have to look up at the moon. And then you howl. Ow! 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 Wendy Wolf has taught everyone how to howl like a wolf. Wow! Who did that one? It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't any of us. It's a wild animal! Ah. It is Granny Wolf. Happy birthday, Wendy. Hello, Granny. You must all be Wendy's friends. How do you do? Hello, Hello Granny, Granny Wolf. Wolf. My, what big ears you've got, Granny Wolf. <laughs> all the better to hear you with. What big eyes you've got, Granny Wolf. All the better to see you with. And what big teeth you've got. 
All the better to eat. Birthday cake. <laughs> <Hooray>! <laughs> Wendy, what's that in the middle of your cake? It is a little house made of sticks. Ah. Time to blow out the candles, Wendy. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow the candles out. <gasps> You've blown the stick house down. Oh, well done. That's my go. It was quite easy. <laughs> Houses made of sticks are easy to blow down. I always forget. What's your house made of, Mr Pig? It's made of bricks. Not straw. Bricks. Oh, of course. <laughs> that was a great party, Wendy. Yes, that was my best party ever. Oh. 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 <laughs> Happy birthday, Wendy! <laughs> George's woolly hat. Today, George is wearing a new woolly hat. <laughs> Hold on to your hat, George, or it will blow off. <laughs> Pepper and George have arrived at Granny and Grandpa Pig's house. Granny Pig! Grandpa Pig! <coughs> Hello, my little ones. Now, children, play nicely. And, George, don't get your new hat muddy. <coughs> <laughs> we promise not to get George's new hat muddy. Thank you, Grandpa Pig. See you later. Bye-bye! Come on, Pepper and George. Let's go down to the garden. Yes! yes. <laughs> George, remember what Mummy Pig said about your hat? Yes, yes, <laughs> Granny Pig. It will be fine. <laughs> Pepper and George have found a large pile of manure. Ooh, what's this, Grandpa? That is manure. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. I put it on my vegetables to make them grow big and strong. It smells really smelly. <sniffs> it's the muckiest, smelliest thing in the garden. Uh, probably best if you two stand back. There. Let's go spread some muck. This is Grandpa Pig's cabbage patch. Hello, cabbages. Would you like some manure? <laughs> it is getting windy. Hold on to your hat, George. Oh, dear. The wind has blown George's hat off. George, catch it! George's hat is caught in a tree. George, you are all muddy. Oh, but your hat is still clean. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. I'll get it down for you. Uh, perhaps I had better help. No, Grandpa. I can do it. Whoops. <laughs> oh, dear. Pepper is covered in mud. I see two little piggies who need a bath. <laughs> George's hat is on top of some reeds in the pond. Lucky for us, your hat is still clean, George. But how do we get it? This is a job for a grown-up. Hmm, I will need a stick. Don't fall in, Grandpa. I know what I'm doing, Peppa. I can reach it. I see a big piggy who needs a bath. <laughs> Grandpa Pig, what on earth are you doing? I'm having a cup of tea. No, you're not. Of course I'm not. That was a joke. It is perfectly clear to see that I have fallen into the pond. That was a silly thing to do. Peppa, George, you're both covered in mud too. We were trying to get George's hat back, Granny. Where is George's hat anyway? It's flying in the sky! I will get George's hat back and then you can all get cleaned up. Be careful, Granny. I would use a stick. Thank you, everyone, but it's perfectly fine. I've got boots on. If you walk on that manure, you will sink. Hush, Grandpa. I have no intention of sinking. 
I could reach it. Got it. Ah! Oh dear. Granny Pig is covered in manure. Ooh, smelly Granny Pig. <laughs> <laughs> Mummy Pig has come to pick up Pepper and George. Hello. Grandpa Pig, I thought you promised not to let the children get muddy. I think you will find we promised not to let George's hat get muddy. And it's not. Muddy. It's perfectly clean. <laughs> yes, I can see. The only clean thing around here is George's woolly hat. <laughs> <laughs> Mummy Pig's book. Mummy Pig is working on the computer. Mummy, can we play Happy Mrs. Chicken on the computer? Not at the moment, Pepper. I need to finish the important book I'm writing. Daddy Pig is in the kitchen making lunch. Daddy, when can we play Happy Mrs Chicken? When Mummy has finished writing her book. Oh, that's it. After lots and lots of hard work, I've finally finished writing my book. Well done, Mummy Pig. Now we can play Happy Mrs Chicken. Hooray! <laughs> you did save your work, didn't you? Ah, no, I didn't press save. Forty ninety ten million hundred and twelve. <laughs> well done, George. That's the highest score ever. <laughs> Duh, my work. Where's my work? Ah, there it is. Quick, save, close. Send. For you. Is your work all right, Mummy? Yes, Pepper. I've just sent it off to be made into a real storybook. Ooh, a storybook. Not just one book. Lots and lots of books. Going to bookshops everywhere. Wow. wow. Mummy, can you read us your story? Yes, I'm going to read it to you and your friends at Playgroup tomorrow. <laughs> Mummy Pig has arrived at the playgroup with lots of copies of her new book. Thank you, Mummy Pig, for coming to read your new book to us today. It's very exciting. These books are so new, I haven't even opened one yet. Children, Mummy Pig has worked hard to write this book. So we must listen politely, even if it is not very good. Thank you. It's about an onion. Ooh! <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was an onion called Funny Onion. Four, seven, six, eight, five, nine, three, oh. The rest of the book is one big long number. I don't understand. This is not what I wrote. What is four, seven, six, eight, five, it's nine? George's Happy Mrs. Chicken High Score. Wow, that is a high score. But where's my Funny Onion story? It's gone. <laughs> I'm sorry, children, but I can't read Funny Onion to you today. Oh. Can you remember the story, Mummy Pig? Yes. Then just tell us the rest. All right. Once upon a time, there was an onion called Funny Onion. <laughs> All he wanted was to make people laugh, but he made people cry instead because he was an onion. <laughs> what a beautiful, sad ending. Uh, no, wait, Madam Gazelle, it's not finished. Oh, I see. Carry on. Funny Onion said, I will search the world to learn how to be funny. He met a tomato. The tomato said, wear a funny hat. But people still cried. <laughs> he met a banana who said, wear some funny shoes. But people still cried. <laughs> funny Onion was ready to give up when a pineapple whispered in his ear. What do you think the pineapple said? Wear a funny red nose. Wear a purple wig. Very good. But what the pineapple really said was, do something funny. Funny Onion did something funny and everyone laughed. They laughed and laughed and laughed. The end. Marvellous. I think it speaks to all of us. The parents have come to collect the children. I've just been to the bookshop, Mummy Pig. It's full of your books. What did you mean by 4, 5, 3, 9, 6, 7? Well, er... Uh... 
actually... It's probably post-narrative. Very modern. Uh... Well done, Mummy Pig. Thank you. <laughs> the parents love Mummy Pig's book. The children love Mummy Pig's book. Everyone loves Mummy Pig's book. Pepper and her playgroup are visiting the zoo for the day. Children, are you ready to see all kinds of animals? Yes, Madame Gazelle. Today, we will be meeting wild animals. Ooh. But don't worry, the wild animals will be safely behind fences. <laughs> ah, a lion has escaped! Hello, I'm Mr. Lion. Welcome to the zoo. It is Mr. Lion, the zookeeper. Hello, Mr. Lion. You've picked a good time to visit. It's feeding time. Ooh. This way to the animals. <laughs> Here are the tortoises. Ooh. We keep this gate shut so they don't run away. They don't look like they could ever run. No, they're moving very slowly. Yes, that's why they live to be so old. How long do they live? Tortoises can live a hundred years. Wow! Now, feeding time. Who knows what tortoises like to eat? Uh... Tortoises like to eat vegetables. That's right. That's why we feed them lettuce. Mr. Lion is feeding the tortoises lettuce. But of course, children, not all animals eat vegetables. That's right, Mrs. Wildebeest. My name is Madame Gazelle. Sorry, gazelle, wildebeest. For some reason, I always get those two mixed up. <laughs> Mr Lion, what animal will we see next? I'll give you a clue. It lives in water. Is it a whale or a shark? <laughs> Wait and see. <laughs> Look carefully into the water. I can't see anything. There's nothing in there. Wait, I think I see something. Ah! Crocodile! Hello, I'm Mrs. Crocodile. I'm the keeper in charge of the penguins. Ah, oh, penguins! Adorable, aren't they? And now it's their feeding time. Penguins eat fish. Ooh, penguins are very good at catching. And waddling. <laughs> and they like to swim. If you look through the glass wall, you can see the penguins swimming underwater. Wow! They're really good at swimming. Yes, that's why we have this fancy pool for them. Very interesting. Thank you, Mrs. Crocodile and Mr. Lion. It's our pleasure, Mrs. Wildebeest. Gazelle. Of course, yes. Gazelle. <laughs> <laughs> What animal are we meeting next? I can see it. It's very tall. It's a giraffe. Yes, that's my dad. He's a keeper at the zoo. Hello, I'm Mr Giraffe. Hello, Mr Giraffe. What sort of animal are you looking after? See if you can guess. <laughs> <laughs> Look up there. There's a net. It must be a flying wild animal. It must be hiding, watching us, waiting to pounce. Ah! Ooh, butterflies. butterflies! Mr Giraffe looks after the butterflies. Is it the butterflies feeding time? Yes, and the butterflies get all the food they need from these flowers. It is amazing they can live on just the food from flowers. I wish I could get by just eating flowers. Yes. All this talk of eating has made me quite hungry. Me too. Well, it's our feeding time now. What's for lunch today, Mr Lion? Ho-ho! Oh, lunch boxes for everyone. Sandwiches, fruit juice and an apple. Little picnics in boxes. Tuck in, everyone. Hooray! Mr Lion loves feeding time at the zoo. Everyone loves feeding time at the zoo. Molly Mole. 
Pepper and her friends are going to playgroup today. Oh, good morning, children. Good morning, Madam Gazelle. Today, we have a new pupil. Hello, I'm Molly Moore. <laughs> I'm sure you will make her feel very welcome. Hello, Molly. Peppa and Rebecca, will you look after Molly, please? Yes, Madam Gazelle. <laughs> it is playtime. <laughs> Molly, have you ever played in a sand pit? It's good for building sand castles and digging. Do you mean like this? Wow! You're good at digging! Yes, I'm a mole. Moles are good at digging. <laughs> the parents have come to pick up the children. Home time, Rebecca! <laughs> Molly! Here is Mrs Mole. Hello, Mummy. Can my new friend Peppa come back to our house to play? Of course she can. Hello, Daddy. <coughs> can I go and play with my new friend Molly Mole? <laughs> Why not? <coughs> I'll pick you up later. Peppa is going to Molly Mole's house. <laughs> this is my house. <coughs> but this is Rebecca's house. Rebecca <laughs> Rabbit lives inside the hill. <laughs> Hello again. Hello, Rebecca. Molly is my new neighbour. But where do you live, Molly? We've moved in underneath Rebecca's house. Squeak. Come and see. <laughs> Moles live deep underground. Our house is not finished yet. My daddy is still building it. Ah! Here is Mr Mole. He is very good at digging. How do you like your new bedroom, Molly? It's lovely and cosy. <laughs> this is my new friend, Peppa. Hello, Mr Mole. <laughs> Delighted to meet you. Daddy Pig has come to pick up Peppa. Hello? Hello? Hello, Daddy Pig. How can I help you? Do you know where Molly Mole's family live? Yes, they have moved in underneath us. Underneath you? Yes, it's quite exciting. Hello, Daddy. <laughs> Hello, Mr Pig. Come inside. Oh, oh. Please excuse the mess. We're building an extension. Oh, I'm a bit of an expert on extensions. Let me know if you need any advice. That's very kind of you. Yes, it takes a lot of skilled people to build a house. Plumbers, electricians, architects. Actually, Mr Mole and I are just building it ourselves. Oh. Hello, Mr Pig. Hello, Mr Mole. Uh, interesting place you've got here. Thanks. There's a little bit more digging to do, but... How are you holding the ceiling up? Is it a steel or a concrete lintel? Lintel? What's a lintel? Well, the good thing about digging a house is that you do what you want, where you want. You could put a door here... Or a door here. Or you could even put one here. Uh, hello, Mr Rabbit. Oh. Hello. Hello, Mr Mole. <laughs> oh, I hope it's OK. I've just made a doorway in your floor. A doorway in the floor? What a good idea. Would you like a cup of tea? Who are you talking to, Mr Mole? I was talking to Mr Rabbit. Hello, Mrs Mole. Oh, hello, Mr Rabbit. How's the extension going? Almost there. Oh, very nice. Very nice. It's great having a hole between our houses because now you can come and play with me any time you want. <laughs> yes, and you can come and play with me any time you want. I like you living here, Molly. I like living here too. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be my best friend? Squeak! Yes, please. Squeak, squeak! <laughs> Molly Mole and Rebecca Rabbit are best friends. <laughs> Upon a time. Pepper and George are looking at storybooks. Look, George, this is an exciting adventure. <laughs> there are fairies and three bears who can't stop eating porridge. <laughs> and a naughty wolf who's looking for an old lady to eat. Oh. Don't 
worry, George. It's always a happy ending. <laughs> I wish we lived in a fairy story. <laughs> Pepper, George, it's time to go. Are we going on an adventure? Yes, we're going to Granny and Grandpa Pig's house for lunch. That's not an adventure. There'll be potatoes. Can we bring our picture books to read in the car? We're not going in the car, Pepper. We're walking there instead. Walking? All the way to Granny and Grandpa's house? Yes, there's a shortcut through the park. Will there be dragging some fairies in the park? Not that I know of. But it will be a nice walk. <sighs> but there won't be any magic. Maybe, if we look hard enough, we might see some. Pepper and George have arrived at the park. Hmm, it doesn't feel like a magic place. Oh, I don't know. It feels a bit magic to me. Yes, this is like the path in Little Red Riding Hood. I wouldn't be surprised if we bumped into the big bad wolf. <laughs> Hello there. It is Mr Wolf. Hello, Mr Wolf. How are you? Very well, thank you. Just a little bit hungry. I'm trying to decide where to go for lunch. I'm going to my granny's house for lunch. Are you really? Yes. Is it far? Not far. This is the shortcut. We'll be there soon. Very good. Oh, well, catch you later. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> that was just like Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> Meeting Mr Wolf in the middle of the woods when I'm going to Granny's house. <laughs> <laughs> Which way now, Daddy Pig? Uh, I'm not sure. There's a little house over there. Let's ask them the way. Hello? Is there anybody home? I wonder who lives here in the middle of the woods. There are three chairs. And three bowls of porridge. Hello, Peppa. Here are Belinda Bear and Mummy and Daddy Bear. Hello, Hello there. there. Hello, Mr and Mrs Bear. Sorry to trouble you. The door was open, so we came inside. It's quite all right. It's lovely to see you. Are you going to stay for lunch, Peppa? It's porridge. <laughs> it's not too hot or too cold, but just right. <laughs> We're actually on our way to have lunch at Granny and Grandpa Pig's house. Could you point us in the right direction, please? <laughs> that path there will take you to Granny Pig's house. Thank, Thank you. you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Wow. That was just like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Yes, with a little house and three chairs. And three bowls of porridge. <laughs> <laughs> we are in a fairy tale. Peppa has arrived at Granny and Grandpa Pig's house. Granny Pig, we're here. Hello. Oh. Here is Mr Wolf. Mr Wolf, why are you here? I'm just round for something to eat. Your granny has made a lovely lunch. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've made a lovely lunch and it's ready now. Come inside. Hello, Peppa. Hello. Wendy Wolf has come for lunch too. Lunch is served. Hooray! Hooray! Potatoes! Potatoes! Ho, ho! You can never have too many potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, I've had an adventure in the fairy tale woods. Ooh, what's the fairy tale woods? It's where you live inside a fairy story. <laughs> Peppa loves fairy stories. Everyone loves fairy stories. <laughs> 